Hi, I'm Laura Dean. And I'm Heidi. And we are the, the U-Haulers. Okay, so it is Sunday. We're recording this on a Sunday. I feel like you're falling off the edge. Are you falling off the edge, kind of? No, but the people on our podcast are so confused now. Oh. If you're on video, you're seeing that I was... <laughs> cut off. Cut off for a second. Yeah. And you're also going to see that I'm going to eat, because I can't handle not eating if you're on video. <laughs> I'll try not to chew too loud for our listeners. Yeah. Yeah, so Sunday. It's Sunday today. Uh, yes. We just went to church. We did. We were kind of getting started. The last time we were here, we kind of said, this is our journey. We're going to, we're church shopping. Yeah. So we went to a church today that was actually really great. Yeah. I mean, not to be startled when church is great, but. No, we've been really concerned. Yeah. Well, and I have, I have a lot of fear surrounding, like, being out Mm -hmm. uh, in a church because I haven't done that a lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> so, you know, there's a lot of intention. We're putting a lot of intention behind this search, right? Like looking for the kids and finding something that works for them, but also something where we think that it's sound biblical teaching. We can be fed. We can be fed. We but, feel safe. Right. Right. So, and um, <clears throat> we had, we love hearing what people want us to talk about. And we actually had a request to talk about how churches handle, you know, gay people coming to their church, how gay people handle going to church, um, and all the battles, um, and how we get through that, and well, how and we it, deal with that in yeah. our relationship, and our family. And it's brought up some really interesting discussions between the two of us. Like, so, uh, you know, we're not interested in going to a church that just brushes under, you know, doesn't actually deal with um, the theology of it, right? Or, or somehow just has like a loosey goosey theology around everything in order to be accepting. We don't want that either. It's not where we feel comfortable. Um, but you know, is maybe like just a church that's willing to sort of tackle some of the discussions in an honest and authentic way. And I mean, I know today for me, you know, I felt like God was very gentle to me, right? Like today yeah. he, I felt very, like he was speaking to me, which is, you know, kind of great and, and yeah. unexpected. And, <clears throat> and it, what? I'm just smiling. <laughs> the whole story, she would like grab my hand tighter every time yeah. he was speaking to her. I was like, oh, that was a moment. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean. And that's actually a big thing, too. So we, like purposely when he walked in today, Heidi grabbed my hand as we walked in front of the whole church to go find our seat. Um, and, on, and you were talking about how that was on purpose. Yeah, because I, I don't want to be in a place where, like, I have to feel hidden in order to feel safe. Right. Um, you know, because I've, I've gone to church throughout the whole journey of being out, right? And <clears throat> we talked a lot last time we were here about how God has kind of shown up in big ways for me in terms of, like, reconnecting with people who are a part of a faith-based community, or at least were, um, and that they were very accepting. And so it's been kind of... Um, a challenge to me again you know I don't want to have to come out every time I want to just be myself and I would hold your hand walking into a building I, I would hold your hand if or squeeze your arm or something if something impacted yeah. me I do when we're watching movies yeah. right so um, and so I just wanted to be authentically myself and I had a moment where we were walking in and I was like oh <laughs> uh, do I really like maybe we'll just act like we're good friends and yeah. like no one's gonna come at us and we're not gonna feel you know ostracized somehow and then I was like no if you're gonna do this and be authentic you have to just be yourself and well and you don't want to get really involved in a church and then find out surprise later how they're gonna handle it right you yeah. need to kind of know that right away which last week um we went to a different church and we same thing, we're holding hands, and they preached about it from the pulpit, that, not the, you know, so it was a clear, like, okay, this is not the church for us. Um, yeah. We're glad to find that out on the first Sunday. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> but it's been a, a difficult journey, which finding church has never been a difficult journey for me in my entire life, even when I came out, because I already had a church, and I went to a really famous, well-known church that I was extremely involved in. I mean, sometimes 12 hours on a Sunday, seven services I would serve. I was moving up in leadership. I was <clears throat> on the weekends, middle week. I mean, we had lines for, you know, an hour. I mean, 
So, so blocks, blocks of block. people. Yeah, so sometimes it'd be hour, hour and a half, people would come early. Um, we would take ones that couldn't get in out to lunch. I mean, I was working the line outside, uh, you, the info bar, you name it. I was very involved, and um, I would step in as a connect group leader when they were out of town, and I was a sections leader for my team and overseeing people. And so it was just a whole very immersed life. Um, because it was a revival and I was seeing people, what we call go from death to life and seeing people's lives just change and volunteers had huge hearts for people. And it was just, a, you know, a new church in, in New York City at the time. And so it was mostly volunteers, just like unpaid, just giving of ourselves. And was this before or after you came out? So it started before I came out and then um, I continued going after coming out. And so there was never that looking for a church right. kind of thing. I was already accepted in that community. And, and, I, known and... and so <laughs> I just, I, I'm a confident person. I just stayed myself. And um, I mean, there were, I was going through a lot at the time. And so I knew I had already stepped out of moving up into leadership. That's where it would have really gotten sticky because um, I was allowed to volunteer there, but I would not have been able to continue um, moving up the leadership track. Um, but that kind of had already been taken care of. And so I just didn't have to run into it in the same way. Um, I unfortunately did have friends that were leaders and had, you know, and came out and had to run into that. And so it's just been a really difficult journey for me now um, because when I moved, right? And unfortunately that church, um, without me even saying the name, I'm sure you'll know who it is, but is under a huge scandal and that's gonna happen to churches, but the scandal as it's unfolded more and more has gotten to the point where I at this point can't stay I mean I can't I can't just look the other way or say you know they'll get through it and grace and forgiveness it's the point where until I see a direct turnaround a complete change um, it's bad enough now that it's you know sickening to the stomach and I can't be a part of it and I'm pissed off about it, honestly. There's been a lot of tears. I'm very angry. And this was my home um, in New York for, I don't know. Years. Years. Eight mm -hmm. years or something. Mm -hmm. And then I was going to go the one in LA. And we had just started that. When the pandemic started, I had, you know, went there. Um, but then everything shut down. So when I was watching New York, and it was after COVID that kind of, the end of COVID. Well, I mean, we're still in COVID. The end of the initial lockdown, that things started to break. And... I was trying to stick it through and the more I learned the more and the more people I cared about that were being and people I didn't know people I directly know and people I don't know they're just being hurt in ways that should never happen with a church so I think the reason I'm so pissed off is because this church was given a gift um, they their preaching their music their songwriting abilities the way that they the volunteers um, who you know had no idea this stuff was going on in the background um, really loved on people and changed hundreds of thousands of lives a year. I mean, it was insane. And they had such a gift God had given them and they blew it. They used it to the wrong advantage. They allowed all the things to get in that shouldn't. And they, yeah, they, I don't know, pretty much put a finger up to God's gift and it pisses me off. And so I'm now having to go from watching some of the most amazing services of my life and I've been in you know worldwide church my whole life and seen all around the world amazing services to now having to search for a church and so it's hard because now I walk in and I'm used to a certain level of preaching or a certain level of music or a certain level of connection or like today we we're talking about I'm used to um you know when the band and the worship's going on the congregation gets really into it um not in a distracting way but <clears throat> where you know they there's not just like kind of raising their hands or kind of just quiet I mean when it's a song about how Jesus is saving us or you know coming to blow his trumpet to bring us home they're celebrating as they're singing and you know you can't help but have your hands in the air because it's, it's a really emotional Christian yeah like I mean it yeah. really like you feel the spirit in that room and the Holy Spirit and and so you know to now go back to more churches which is fine it's just a different culture but where they you know it's more just kind of staring at the singers up front and just kind of you know um 
I'm not used to that. So I'm just having to kind of lay aside everything I'm used to, to this journey to find the right thing for our kids, for our family. I'm used to not caring about the age group. Like I used to very young churches and, um, and we did find one of those. Um, and our kids would have loved it. I mean, we happened to go on Sunday and Justin Bieber got up and led worship and that, you know, that's LA for you. But, uh, but they don't have a kid's service yet. So that can't, you know, and so it's just different priorities, you know, like the kids <clears throat> is the biggest priority, which obviously that's never been my priority before finding a church. Um, it was just, you know, where I felt home. So I'm having to just kind of now look at it from a parent's perspective, which is different. Um, and so the first things I asked today all had to do with their kids program. Right. Like that's what I cared about more than anything else. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so today, um, last week didn't go so well. Um, this week went really well. Um, and then we have, how, how many are still on our list? Uh, four more. Yeah. So we've, Dean has done so out of like six. We're now mm -hmm. four to go. And, uh, we luckily today's the first day I've breathed because no matter what happens in the next four, we have a church. Yeah. And I, I felt the same way. literally went to bed last night thinking, are we just not supposed to go to church? Like, and then I was like, well, we have kids and that is so important to me, you know, because mm -hmm. that, well, we were both raised that way too. Right. And there's a certain piece of. I mean, youth even group this... was a big deal yeah. to me, youth group and youth events and that community. Um, but it has to be a safe space and it has to be safe for them to have four moms. I mean, that's important. And we were treated, I mean, we were an obvious couple today, y'all. Like there was no getting around that we were friends. And um, we even had to go get, we went and got our gifts because welcome gifts. I yeah. need my free gifts. Oh, dear so. God. And so <laughs> this girl in her free packages. I'm like, there's free gifts where people are new. We have to go. <laughs> and I was calling her baby because she wasn't taking the water, and I really wanted to take the free water. Um, and didn't they water. they asked if I needed the water. <laughs> I told her finally as we're walking, away, I was like, listen, stop saying no to gifts. You're saying yes t for me. Yeah, I didn't want the water, but she wanted the water, and so I was. I, I want the I extra have water. We need two waters. That my gift. I say yes to my gift because it's going to be for her. So unless, that's fine. Unless you want the gift, then you can clearly. The but just don't leave the gift. Right, right, clearly. Anyways, um, but yeah, <laughs> so we asked about their kids program um, and told yeah. them we have three kids and. And it was an older gentleman that didn't bat an eye. He was like, "Yeah, I'm so the so ten year olds do. Us, yeah, and... glad you were here. Hope you come back. Have a great week. Yeah, you really know? sweet. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. So I mean, I agree. Like at least." you know, Dean did a ton of research, so we're going to go and spend the time looking at churches and uh, figuring out what is our perfect church home or, you know, what is the church home where we feel like we're supposed to go, right? Like there is no perfect church home, but, right. um, but where are we supposed to go? <clears throat> um, but yeah, I feel the same kind of hope. Like, okay, well, if all the rest of them don't fit with us at all, like we probably found yeah. them. That's okay. So that feels pretty great. Yeah, and there is um, one of the churches on our list is, so we have the gay welcoming churches, obviously, that <clears throat> are the majority on our list. There is one that is gay affirming. Um, which, so you have to tell them the difference. People won't know. Okay, so gay welcoming is, um, they're not going to be a church that would perform gay weddings. They're, um, they welcome us as a family and where we are. And they will love us. You're mm -hmm. not going to find, um, unless there's kind of a rogue guest speaker once in a while. You're not going to find a lot of sermons that are going to be preached um, directly on against it. homosexuality. Yeah. Um, they will know your couple and love you and love your kids and be glad you're there. In other words, it's safe for our family. But if hard pressed on doctrine, um, they are going to go by the, the old way of thinking. Um, Where it's a sin. And the verses that are now being realized of the um transliteration translation all that um they are going to still be of the mind of you know hate the sin love the sinner um kind of way and but it's a sin like any other sin yeah. right like and in, in the community realizing that everyone is a sinner this is a sin like every other sin and there are churches where like homosexuality is like whoa you're a homosexual like you are not welcome that is a yeah. sin that which has never made all sense others. at all um right. if you think about it you know how many if you went to church right now i mean if you just in your mind counted how many divorced couples or remarried couples were sitting around you you know and and that also would be considered which like used a, to be like this taboo thing yeah. you know so 
<clears throat> or how many people uh, you know are having sex outside of marriage you know so it's it's definitely um where in some churches it's put on its own well it's um, like set apart as like one of the worst outside of like blasphemy like going to hell kind of sense, yeah, yeah. Like which exactly. is not that's not biblical either um no matter <clears> which <throat> way you read the bible that's right. not biblical so all that to say we um feel comfortable going to gay welcoming churches um of course gay affirming would be so gay affirming would be like there's a church we're looking at that has gay pastors they preach about the welcoming of um, they even put on their website everything is it does not matter your sexual orientation jesus yeah. loves you we're here to show you that um we want this to be a safe place for you um, they will there'll be a lot of lgbtq in the congregation yeah. you can lead you can speak you're welcome to you're encouraged to they'll marry uh, gay couples, yeah. So of like course this. that is obviously <clears throat> where we hope all churches get to, and if that ends up being home, that would be amazing. Um, but again, Dean's, <clears throat> and and I really do mean Dean because I had walked away from the church, so for me, I don't have the same like high bar, right? Mm -hmm. So, but Dean's high bar of like what ministry looks like and can look like, right? And also. Uh, Dean has a strong commitment to our kids should think it's the coolest place they go, right? Like where they would want to invite their friends and they want to be involved in it. Because of course that for us had a huge meaning in our lives growing up, right? Like where the cool place to be was church. Yeah. And so you're in this really safe, important, you know, Jesus filled space and it's still the coolest place you can yeah. be, right? And, and I was that way at my last church, you know, yes. um, I invited everyone I dated, every girl I dated I invited and many of them um, I know one in particular had not been to church in 13 years and said yes to me and she still will tell people like it's the most loving yeah. place I've ever been I've never felt so much love like you should go there it will change your life you know and so I felt welcome like anyone would be welcome and I wanted to bring all my friends and I want that for them to feel that way and I also just feel that God often leads me to places where I need to be bold and where um, where it's not going to be the most comfortable, where it's going to be where people, they, they need to have to be faced with, you know, this is a family in your community. This is a family coming to your church. This is a family that you like their personalities and all of a sudden now you found out they're gay. So now what? You still love them and you still accept them and you start thinking about how you feel God feels about us and how Jesus he loves us. I mean, if you love us, he loves us that much more. And, and the blessings that then they get to see the blessings Jesus is doing in our lives and mm -hmm. start recognizing how we honor Jesus and how he leads us and hear the stories, of how he brought us together. And they, it starts to kind of change from the within. And I think that's kind of been my calling in a lot of areas. And so I would not be surprised if, um, a gay welcoming church is more where God leads us to um, right, just which, for the fact that that's where he wants us to be and the kind of um, impact that they'll have on us and we'll have on them and kind of where we'll start affecting each other and, um, you know. Which I think is another way that God has sort of worked in our relationship because I would never, I mean, I also feel that that's a place I, I'm supposed to be, but um, I'm not bold <laughs> like I'm not that brave I don't I want to go and be fed and I'm a little bit more on the quiet side right like my faith is deeply personal and something that I will share if you're kind of inner circle right but um being put in a place where once again I believe it's important to be out and be authentic and be real right um and so because of you I'm gonna do that like I mean likely right that that will be what happens and where our family ends up. And um, while that's uncomfortable for me and stretching for me, uh, I do think it's an important part of sort of uh, living a real truth about it, right? And yeah. yeah. And it's so. definitely something we'll choose together. Like I want oh, Heidi yeah. to feel just as home as I do and vice versa. And Yeah. And we've even talked about, you know, possibly, you know, if the kids, if we find one place for the kids that we, you know, <clears throat> during the summer we have week on week off with the kids and and so it's not that we can never go check out other churches you know right. even if we find a home for them that we go with them you know yeah but it's definitely weeks. and right now we're 
10 days on, five days off. Um, and so we, ha we get to have them for every amount. other Sunday. Yeah. So we still at the same time get to do the same thing. So, yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, I mean, it's an important part of what we're doing right now, right? Figuring yeah. this out. And, and we're grateful to be enough out of quarantine. Today, the church service was outside. Like they had a big tent. But it was in person. But in person, which is great, because you yeah. really don't get a feel for a church online. Yeah. Um, well. Or what your church home might be, right? Um, yeah. So that was great. So. And of course, we're still going to be the journey on how much can we be involved? How much are we allowed to be involved? Um, how will that feel? But so it's, it's not a short process, yeah. right? And it's, um, and I think it's just important for people to find whatever your faith is, whatever you believe, find a community and find somewhere that feels safe, but that you, um, if it is Christian, um, I mean, just know that Jesus loves you yes. and that there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of reading you can do. There's a lot of study you can do, um, that will change your world and make you realize that you're worth it and Jesus is on your side and he has plans for you and he loves you and that, that there's been many things that the church has gotten wrong before and that they would have stood on ceremony of this is exactly right and that cool. now they will look back and be like oh my gosh of How course ever think that way? you know yeah um you know uh of course this isn't true. Of course we shouldn't have slavery and of course we, you know, yeah. and how could a church ever think that? And there will come a day, God willing, I believe it with everything in me. There will come a day that people will just not even understand why this was ever an issue. And of course, you know, the scriptures, when the, now that they're realizing how they were misinterpreted wrong, um, that this is not going to be the battle in the future but right now it's it is something where you just have to there are places that will accept you and there are places that will love you and you just seek them out and don't give up and well and we're happy to share our journey and what we find yeah. too you know privately where i don't think we're going to put any church on blast no. or you know talk about you know where we've been or where we land necessarily in public right but um but i think you know, if you really, if you're really going through that journey, or if you're really looking for a community that'll love you, right? And we happen to find that, uh, we're happy to share that. So, because yeah. I mean, it's Dean has done endless hours. It's crazy. Like she's constantly. Yeah. What about this church? And then reading reviews and what people have said and what their theology statements are, and it's a big deal, right? And yeah. <clears throat> it's more work than I would have done, right? Um, yeah. I just would have stayed closeted <laughs> and gone. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's um, something we're definitely open to to sharing with you if you reach out privately. So please please feel free to do that. Yeah, and, and we I, don't have the answers yet. We're not done. Like we still have four no. on our list. Yeah, and I read a review recently of a church, and it wasn't one that maybe was my style that I wanted to go to, but I was really impressed by this review because at first the reviews were how alienating um, people that grew up in that church and then came out felt. Um, well, they, and they had a speaker. They had a guest time. speaker that really um, made people, or no, it was a new pastor. It was a new pastor, and yeah, he just decided to draw a line in the sand, right? Yeah, that day, and this people were day. walking and... out, and they were um, just really having a hard time. And I read this review from someone in the congregation that wrote to the person who reviewed it. Yeah, yeah so basically on Yelp, they're writing to the person that wrote this review and said, "I just want to tell you that I agree with you. It was horrible." I'm so sorry. I've been going to that church for years and I want you to know that there's so many in this church like me that don't agree with that. I'm sorry that people applauded. They got it wrong. But if there's any way you could come back to our church because we need people that are gay to come to our church. We need gay couples to come to our church. We need people that are married, you know, gay married couples to come to our church so that our congregation can start to see um, the Christians out there and get to know them. She's like, we desperately need it. We have a lot of, um, you know, old money and a lot of problems with change and we're working on it and we just need people to not give up on us and help us without change. And I was like, wow, what? I mean, I was just blown away uh, by this yeah. lady's boldness to say all that for one and two. Well, and the grace around that. Yeah, right? and to realize that there's a lot of churches stuck in that because, I mean, sad to say, but... A church is not run by, you know, 
it's money. I mean, of course it is <laughs> to get you know to keep those doors open. And when the beneficiaries you know feel a certain way, you know, there's there is and when change has always been hard for generations and church and and so you know they are going up against a lot and change takes time and I, I was just I don't know I was just very blown away by her just I mean she was almost begging like please get people come to our church like help help us change there's so many of us that want it and we don't know how to get there so and I think of course that resonates with you right like you were just saying that you're called to places right where you are a trailblazer and where you yeah you do have to be the person that people encounter, right? That people love and like and want to be around. And then they're like, oh, well, if I love and like this person and she's gay, what does that mean? And then they start to have this inner struggle, right? And yeah. I think that's a beautiful place, right? And I think that's an amazing gift that you have. But I also think that, you know, you got to be careful um, that you don't you do not do that if, where, if what you need from church is healing and Absolutely. rest and that kind of hope, right? Um, because each of us, I think, are given specific gifts, mm -hmm. um, not only to impact our world as we know it, right, but to, to help guide and change and shift those sort of traditions that maybe aren't um, where they should be, right? But we all have different ways of coming at that, right? Yeah. And it's just like what we were talking about when we were talking about how important it is to come out. You know, you have to do that in a way that's safe for you, and only you know how to do that, right? So for you and me, going into a place and asking them to encounter us and doing that with a certain amount of grace and love that we're willing to return, right, in patience, um, that's our journey, right? Mm. And that's what we're going to do, so. Yeah, and that lady also, in her thing, did bring up, she was like, you know, she put literature in that review, like, even if you yeah. can't come back to our church, read this. go read Matthew Vine's yeah. book and go to this um, this site about gay Christianity. She was like helping her. She was like, you know, churches used to believe that the world was flat. That's what it was, right? The world was flat. Yeah. Churches would have said that because of this, you know, these certain scriptures that the world was flat and that was just a common thing in church and no one would ever, you know, argue that. And of course, now they'd be like, what? Of course, right. church the earth isn't flat no one believes that'd be ludicrous and that used to be something so it's so funny when people just you know don't challenge things and just say well that's you know I mean that's what they had interpreted from scripture from the bible and they said no the bible says the earth is flat there's nothing you are from satan if you tell us anything different mm -hmm. and then no one would think that and she said the same thing about slavery she's like you know, the church has gotten it wrong before and they're, they've gotten it wrong now yeah. and just, you know, hang in there. And so it was, yeah, it was, um, kind of a breath of fresh air because I was really struggling last night with a gay family looking for church. So it was, it was, it was nice. I wrote her back. I, I didn't even say who I was. I just wrote her back. Thank you for this. So I sent it. Yeah. So. Well, and you know, you have, taken on like the lion's share of this right mm. I I am not in a place where like I haven't had the experience you had with churches and so I'm yeah. much more like I will do this I will take this journey I do have a faith center and I I want to have a faith-based community um but I'm not willing to do the work and so I think um you know that's kind of been your gift to the family what happened oh you dropped things dropped a ring Good noise I was trying to stop happening yeah so yeah I mean it's just been it's been interesting I think for us uh and also you know uh again just kind of a, a spotlight on how we are compatible right like I'm not going to do that work which doesn't which isn't to say that I'm not going to participate or I won't go or I'm not going to be a part of it right definitely I'm going to go um yeah but I appreciate that you're willing to kind of slug it out, like slog through it. Goodness gracious, yeah. like all these things. Um, and for me, that would just be very damaging. Like I can't yeah. spend a lot of time hearing that. It's it's yeah. it's something that had damaged me very greatly in the past and I don't need it. I just don't need to. And I'm not like Teflon, this one. Nothing <laughs> sticks to this one. Ask her sisters. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, so, yeah. Anyway, so that's. I like the challenge. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> and also. We talk a lot because we obviously are faith-based, but that doesn't mean you are. So it doesn't have to be with a, you know, a faith group or 
any religious group um, if you're not, but if we found anything to be true from this pandemic is that we are meant to be with community of some sort, be that a Facebook group or just finding community in your area or whatever it is, reach out to people. Um, and Yeah, I mean, they say that <clears throat> it's catastrophic levels of mental health and loneliness and depression and that it could take up to 10 years collectively for us all to recover from what has happened with this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the ways we're seeking to heal some of that, right, and heal some other things for us, but like is to find community in a faith-based place and, and, and also not and elsewhere. Like exactly. we're, finding, we're reaching out and wanting to make, you know, LGBTQ friends of yeah. all walks, moms and not moms and and a couple of friends and single friends. And we're just really, um, yeah. especially because I'm new here. And when I was, when I moved here, it was a complete pandemic of lockdown. Um, and so we're just... Yeah, but be intentional. Building our own community yeah. from the ground up right now, and so but be intentional to... about it because I think it is. I think you're right. I think we are really are meant to do that, and in doing that, you know, uh, there's a lot of positive benefits to that. Yeah. Clearly, our children have no problem building community. That's their, <laughs> their iPad, iPad dinging with all their friends saying, "Where are you? What's happening?" Yeah. I mean, our 10-year-olds have no problem building community. 10-year-olds going on to 16, yeah. I swear. Community for days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we love you. We do. And we will talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye.